Right, today's session is how to. We're going to use Talend Open Studio using the TMAP component to calculate the row number using the variables within a TMAP. We're going to use this raw file uh, which contains a uh, name, subject, grade, and exam date. And we're going to use that data to try and create a row number as a third as a final column on the end. We're going to use uh, these components, file input delimiter to read the raw file. Then we're going to sort it, um, which is uh, equivalent to SQL uh, statement where you partition by and then order by at the end. Um, in the raw file, we've got the name as the uh, is the way we're going to partition it, and we're going to order it by the exam date. Um, then we're going to use the TMAP, the TMAP component to add a row number on the end. Um, the row number is going to partition by the name. And then we're going to use the log row to read it back to screen. So the the SQL equivalent is what I'm typing now. So I'm going to call this raw data, what should we call it? Name, grade. And the SQL equivalent to row number would be row underscore number over partition by name. And then order by the exam date as row number. And the final log row component should in theory output something that looks something like this, where you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, which is partitioned by the name. Right, so let's go and build that within Talon. So I'm going to type file input delimiter. I'm going to go and map that local file, which is in my desktop. I'm going to log it back to screen so we can see it. I'm going to call this log row or data. And finally, we need to make sure that the file separator is comma. When we set up this component, we know that it's got one header row. And then we're going to define the columns within here. It's got four columns. Name, subject, grade, and exam date. see what it looks like. So pressing F6 it runs the job and we can see there's the raw data as per what was in the text file. I'm going to quickly edit the column because we know that exam date is a date column which means I can then change the date pattern to make sure that when it reads this input file it understands the format of the string that's being read in and and can cast it as a date. Right, now that we've done that, let's go and sort the data. I'm going to map this, that's it. And sync the columns. We are going to sort by name first, then by exam date, and then finally by subject. And note that the sort no more alpha, everything's number by default, so we'll change name to alpha. Exam date is a date, and subject is an alpha again. So now that the data is sorted, we're going to flow the data into TMAP, and then we're going to, within TMAP, sort out the row number. So add output first. I'm going to copy all the columns within the input, control C, and then click on the output, and then control V to paste the columns. To create the columns, that's a quick way of doing it. I'm going to auto map, which maps the names because they're the same. And then I'm going to create a new column called RN. That's going to be my integer, which is going to be the row number. And finally, I'm going to show the output back into a log row happened there. Let's go and 
grab up and want to name this output. I'm going to flow out one to this log bro. Map back to table. Display as a table. And there we go. And because everything for RN is a null, so we're going to fix that now within TMAP. So now within TMAP, we are going to add three variables. And their purpose will become clear shortly. So for variable one, it's going to hold the name. And variable two is going to hold the row number. And variable three is going to be the previous name. So let's set these up. Name, we've got row number, RN. RN is an integer. And then we're going to use previous name. Now the, the purpose for using variables within TMAP is that TMAP reads data top to bottom. By top to bottom it means it, it, it loops through the rows within the file. So the first var name, the first name is going to evaluate, it's going to evaluate var name and the evaluation for there is row three dot name. Let's paste that down there because it might be useful. Save and type in later on. Then the next variable it's going to evaluate is this RN variable. So when it evaluates row number, it's going to try and evaluate this following expression. So I'm going to say var previous name. Well, at that point. It's not evaluated previous name, the variable previous name. So I'm going to use, I'm going to test it and say, is previous name null? And if it is, it's going to, going to evaluate to one. Because at that point, previous name hasn't been set, so it will be null. Otherwise, I'm going to, well, I'm going, let's finish the expression off. And then I'll walk through exactly what it's doing. So previous name equals, is it? Null, if true, then one, else. And then I'm going to sort of say is var name dot equals var previous name. Var name dot equals var previous name. And then if that's true, I'm going to increase this row number value by rn plus one. Otherwise, I'm going to else I'm going to save one. And I'm going to close that bracket there. So what? So let's let's walk through from this using this file what it's trying to do. Let's tidy this up. Right. So Tmap reads the rows from top to bottom. So on the first variable expression, it says, all right, what's name is name, so it's going to say Andrew. And then for the row number, it's going to say, all right, what's previous name? At which point it's not been evaluated yet, which means it's going to default. Row var rn is going to be one. Now for the next row, well, it's going to evaluate Rn, it's going to be 1, and then it's going to sign, it's going to evaluate the expression for previous name, which is row R, row 3 dot name is Andrew. And then for row 2, it's going to say, right, name equals Andrew, but this time it's for record 2. Rn then evaluates expression. Is previous name, which happens to be Andrew, because it was finally set, 
Um, does previous name, is previous name null? No, it's Andrew. Therefore, it's going to calculate the second part of that expression. And it's going to say, is my var name, which is the second Andrew, row two Andrew, does that equal the previous name, which is Andrew? It does. Therefore, the true exp the, the evaluates the part of the condition where it's true, which is var rn, which is one, plus one, which makes it two. And then we move on to the next row. Does row three Andrew equal the previous name, which is row two Andrew? Yes, it does. So therefore, the row is going to be the previous rn, which is two, plus one, which is three. Then it's going to evaluate this one. Does Boris equal Andrew? Which So does the current Boris, current name equal the previous name, which is Andrew? It doesn't. And because it doesn't, it can't evaluate that. It just says it resets it to one. So that'll be one, and then we'll go through again. Does Boris equal Boris? Yes, it, one plus one equals two. And does Boris equal Boris? Yes, it does. So therefore it's two plus one, which makes it three. And so on and so forth. Jeremy doesn't equal Boris, which means it'll be one, it resets or whatever. So that's that's how variables work within Tmap. Um, the fact that it evaluates the expression, evaluates the variables sequentially top to bottom. So the order within Tmap of the variables is important. So now let's run. Let's run the map. Let's run the job. And let's see if the final column are an update, which it does. Excellent. So you can see there that the partition by has worked. So the equivalent to a partition by has worked. And you can see there that the partition is by name. If you wanted to partition by more columns, you can do that. It's just a bit more fiddly. So imagine if we wanted to partition by name and subject. Well, we'd, create, we'd add more variables. So we'd have, we've, currently we've got a, a name and a previous name. We'd want subject and previous subject. And in the row number, the RN expression, we'd say um, previous name, is it null? And there's a previous subject. So I've typed that wrong. I should say previous subject. Is that null? If it does, then one. Otherwise, we're going to say var subject equals var previous subject. Close bracket. Is that true? So on and so forth. Yeah, so there's a bit of a mistake there at the start. You should say var ampersand ampersand var previous subject. But yeah, the more columns you want to do, then the more variables you've got to add in. But it, it proves my point. Thanks. Bye.